Hello everybody, in this video we're going to be proving Monge's theorem, which states that for any three disjoint circles, so they don't intersect, in the same plane P, and no two, or I think I meant to say congruent here, so congruent, uh, show that the intersection of their common tangents lies on a line, or I should say intersections. So here I have, so, so we have these two lines, are common tangents to the blue and red circles so that they intersect here. The common tangents here and here intersect here. The common tangents here and here intersect at this point. And we see that this red line contains all three points. And so we want to show that no matter how I were to configure these um, three circles as long as uh, as long as n no two of the circles have the same radius, that's what this was supposed to say, um, then then this will always hold. Because I could just be presenting a, a diagram where this just happens to happen, but we want to show this is always true. So let's think about how we can prove that three points are collinear. One way is to, uh, one common way is Menelaus's theorem, which basically is a version of Cheves' theorem. It's almost just like Cheves' theorem, but if you have a triangle and you have some line, and there's basically an equation for ratios of you know, sort of the the points where the line intersects the sides of the triangle. Uh, there's sort of a, a ratio equation that that it has to hold. But here we're dealing with with circles and not really triangles. Um, now another way is that notice we have this this specification, which is sort of hints to the solution is that they're in the same plane P. Let's think about two planes, right? If I have if I have some plane, let's see, here, right? Let's say this is a plane. And I draw another plane that looks something like that, right? We can see that the intersection of these two planes is uh, give or take, it's this line, right? This line is the intersection of these two planes. And and that's always true. If two planes intersect, they intersect in a line. So we have, we're given this plane which the, which everything in our diagram contains, the plane P. But what if we were to construct a second plane, Q, and show that these three points all lie on the plane, Q? What would that imply for us? Well, that would imply that, that since Q, that since all three of these points are on both, plane, both planes, P and Q, then they're on the intersection of P and Q but the in intersection of P and Q is on a line. So this looks promising, but how can we show, or what, what kind of plane could we use? So we're actually going to go 3D for this, and it's gonna be a little hand wavy, but uh, I'll, I'll basically just use, I'll use another color, I'll use orange to show when I'm going sort of out of the plane, right? So at each uh, at each circle, right? Consider like consider this is uh, the x y plane, right? Our, our plane P is the x y plane, but now we're going we're going to add the z axis. At each center of the circle, we construct something. We construct another point which lies directly above it uh, and has it's, this length is is equal to the radius of the circle. So here if I draw in the radius, 
these two are equal, and this sort of meets at a at a 90 degree angle to the xy plane. So this point, or, uh, this orange point, is actually it lies outside, sort of it go it goes through the monitor. I just can't sort of draw it like that. So if you'd like, there's sort of another right angle here. So this out, this is going up. And so if we do that for each of uh, for each of the circles here, that was bad, like so. Then what we notice if we connect these new points. as we saw there, that they intersect at these tangency points, or at the, at the intersection of the tangents. And let's prove why that is. So we have, we have these two points, right? They're, and, and, and notice that, that an important thing here is that three points determine a plane. So we have the plane P is determined exactly by the by the centers of these circles. So we have another plane Q, which is determined by these new points. Uh, let me use a gray here, so that's the ruler. So this gray point here, that's in the plane Q. This is in the plane Q. And this is in the plane Q. So our plane Q, we can kind of see that it's slanted. It's it's sort of slanting this way because this is the smallest radius. So let's let's see why um, the intersection or like where this line. Let's just see why this holds, right? So we know that this length. Uh, let's let's call this this one r. Uh, let's say this small triangle has radius r one. This is radius r two and this is radius r3. And we know that when we have two tangents, right? Uh, let me draw this in dark green. If I connect the the center to the tangency point, I get a 90 degree angle. That's like the definition of a tangent. So I have to do that here and here. Well, we notice that if I were to connect the centers of these triangles, Obviously, they will meet at the intersection here because this point, uh, let's call this point X, is the center of a homothety, right? Because these are uh, similar right triangles. And in other words, that means that this length, uh, let me call this A, that's A, this is B, this is C. The length xb to xc is equal to the the ratio of the radii, so r2 to r3. But notice that since we've defined this length to be r2 and this length to be r3, then these triangles are similar, and therefore we have another homothety, which implies that this orange line has to also be at this point x. Similarly, for for over here, right? If we were to connect these two centers, we see that we have right triangles. Uh, if I if I if I drew in the tangents, right, we would have right triangles here and here. So right triangles here, but but then we're basically taking this right triangle that's on the plane P, like right here and we're sort of extending it or sort of flipping it into the third dimension into the z axis and as a result we see that this orange line will also will go through this other point and and same goes for these two tri uh two circles and that is actually the complete proof of Monge's theorem this is enough to show that that since uh, the orange lines go through these points, let's call them uh, x, y, and z, since the orange lines 
go through those points and the orange lines are on uh, Q and P or the orange lines are on Q and these points we knew they were on P that just implies that these are on the intersections of P and Q which is a line and that's the end of proof so thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video uh, and I will see you in the next one